Zach Williams here with uh, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers and uh, we're here for Friday night ties. So this evening we are going to tie a fly pattern called the Chubby Chernobyl. One of my favorite trout flies uh, in particular for uh, West Slope cutthroat trout uh, up in the mountains of uh, the West. My home country being North Idaho and Western Montana. But this, uh, this fly here, this one imitates a golden stone fly, but the chubby Chernobyl is a very versatile fly pattern. Uh, you can tie it in a bunch of different sizes and colors to imitate everything from stone flies to grasshoppers, ants, beetles, stuff like that. So it uh, has its uses uh, all the way across North America and uh, just uh, vary it based on your seasonal needs. So again, the, uh, my favorite being the golden stonefly in the summer there, but uh, pink and purple have become very popular as a tractor kind of hopper patterns in late summer. And uh, today we're gonna tie one in olive and a little smaller. And that's gonna imitate a golden, or uh, excuse me, a squalus stonefly, which uh, I'm coming to you in early April here, and uh, out my door is the Bitterroot River, and the squalas are the happening thing this time of year in this region. So a squalus stonefly imitation there for the chubby Chernobyl. So the, the chubby Chernobyl fly is what I would call more of a uh, design profile than a uh, specific pattern. It's, uh, we vary it a lot in uh, size and color. So let's get to it. Uh, what we're going to need for the Chubby Chernobyl, um, for the Squala today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a size eight hook here. Uh, this is actually a nymph hook. It's got a little heavier wire. This fly has a lot of foam and buoyant materials in it, so I'm not so concerned about the heavier wire. So make things easy and uh, be a little tougher with the heavier hook. And we're going to need a tail. Uh, I'm gonna use some pearl crystal flash today. Body, uh, some sort of olive dubbing for the squala here, but uh, Pick your flavor based on what you want to do. And uh, we're always going to have some rubber legs, so I've matched the uh, kind of olive color again there. Body, uh, we're going to use some olive brown foam. And then a big part of this fly is the wing. And uh, the traditional wing on a chubby Chernobyl is this white poly yarn or Zelon. Kind of like that. Um, today on the Squala, I'm gonna go with gray. Gray's gonna blend in a little more, look a little more natural. Um, in the past, I've used everything from caribou and elk fur to uh, deer hair as well. Um, anything that's buoyant and uh, visible. And uh, with a fly like this, I've always been one to use what's on hand, so uh, you know, Use what you have, what makes you happy, and uh, just keep in mind you want something buoyant for the wing and you'll be all right. So, we will lock a size eight hook in the vise here. Squalls are typically eight to twelves, um, so this is a larger size. I'm gonna lay down a base of thread. That thread base is uh, typical of any fly, but when you're tying with a, a foam like this, you wanna be especially careful uh, to lay down a nice thread base so that that foam doesn't spin or twist around the hook. So there I've uh, worked my thread back and forth, covered all the hook, and I have a real nice base. First tying step then is the tail. I'm gonna take five to 10 strands of that pearl crystal flash here. Lay it along the top of the hook, extending about a third of the uh, hook length back past the bend. I'm gonna bind that down. Trim the excess from the front there. That's your tail. 
Next step is going to be the body. Got some olive brown squala covered colored dubbing here. Again, pick your poison on this stuff. We're going to dub our thread here with a nice even body. If you have trouble with uh, the dubbing there, the key is to kind of lay it along the length of your thread and then using your thumb and forefinger you're going to roll with some pressure keep rolling that till you get the body shape that you want the other key with uh, dubbing a hook body there is to uh, start with less and uh, add a little at a time here so I'm going to dub forward with that just a nice even body don't need any taper to this for a stonefly and then add a little more until I cover this body from front to back. There's a nice even body. I left myself a little bit of room, about an eighth of an inch there at the front beyond the hook eye so I don't crowd that too much. Nice even body. You'll see one little trick here if you're new to fly tying. After every step, I shorten my working thread, this distance between my bobbin and the hook there. So shorten the working thread back up. That makes everything a lot easier to work with than if you have a whole lot of thread hanging out of your bobbin there. So shortened up thread here I'm using is a, it's a six dot olive, but I would have been perfectly happy with black if that's all I had. So. In this case, I had it available where I could match the body pretty well and that'll hide the thread wraps. So I'm actually going to work this thread back with some big wide wraps over that body there. Come in and I'm about an eighth of an inch forward of my tail there on the body. And the next step is going to be to cut a chunk of this foam. This is closed cell foam. You can get it at any fly shop. You can also get it at a craft store typically in a whole bunch of colors. So I'm going to cut a piece of foam that's slightly wider than the body I just laid down. I'm going to keep it fairly slender for a fly like this. And uh, you can cut it a little long here just so you have a little extra room. On the back of it I'm going to round off the corners so that it's not completely square on the end. Now we're going to tie it down and it's going to extend back past the dub body and just kind of over that tail a little ways, not all the way to the back, just a little ways. Now I'm going to bind that down there, again about an eighth of an inch in front of the end of my dub body. You can see I'm only using three or four wraps to bind that down Less is generally more with uh, the tying wraps, otherwise you're going to uh, start to have a lot of unnecessary bulk in there. So just a few wraps, enough to secure it. Next step, we're going to need some legs. I'm going to take two of my rubber legs here and uh, trim them to a couple inches long. I'm going to lay one on each side of that body, still in the same spot there. I'm going to bind these down, one on each side. So they're a little long now, we're going to trim them at the end of the fly. There's my several wraps. I'm going to take a little pinch of dubbing here. Dub my thread a little bit. I'm going to cover all that with just a couple wraps of dubbing, just a little bit. Don't make it too bulky, but cover up those thread wraps. That's my back leg post, leg station there. Now I'm going to work the thread back forward. You can see I do that with only a couple wraps, big widely spaced wraps, just to get my thread back up front. And we're going to come in again about, we're an eighth of an inch in front of the back of the fly there for that post. Same thing's going to happen here. And I'm going to lay that body flat, kind of hold it down with my off hand. 
and bind it down with three or four wraps. And we're going to grab two more legs, a couple inches long, lay one on each side, just like before. Bind those down, three or four more wraps. There's your front legs. Then before we go and cover up those thread wraps, now's the time to add the wing. So I've got that poly yarn here. I'm going to cut about an inch long. And I'm making this pretty full. This is uh, we can add our floatant to this, help keep the fly on the surface. And uh, this big wing is something that's nice and visible for us in rough water. Um, so. There it is. I'm going to make the wing extend to about the back of my body there. Not the tail, but the back of the foam. So I kind of measure it out right there. Pinch it down with my off hand. And then I'm going to bind it right there between the le legs, between the rubber legs there again. Bind it down. Sometimes you need a few extra wraps on this one to bind all that material down. I'm going to come in here, make sure I don't clip the legs off, get in here tight and clip that front material off. There's my wing. Now I can cover all that up with a little dubbing. So, dub just a couple inches of thread here. Shorten my working thread back up. There, covered my thread wraps. Got a little extra dubbing here, so I'll pull that off there. I'm going to just bring the thread in front of my foam. If I need to, there's a little extra space I left there. I can Throw another little pinch of dubbing on there, not necessary, but I can cover that extra space of the hook cup if need be. I'm going to grab my whip finish tool. They're all different, just make sure you have a whip finish, learn how to use it. I'm going to come in here, whip finish the head of the fly. And the last step is I just need to trim my foam to just in front of the hook guy there. And then I'm going to round the front corners here just a little, just like we did on the back. And trim my rubber legs to, oh, let's say three quarters of an inch. Just kind of even them out here. Um, both sides. And the last one's hiding. And there it is. Chubby Chernobyl. Better get done. Still a couple hours of light and uh, bugs are hatching. See you next time.